I'm Chuck, this is What is the Wheel, and today I'm going to make some tie rods. Here we are at a go-kart. I've got my high dollar five gallon bucket go-kart stand, which is actually a great way to hold your go-kart up. Uh, they're super cheap and they, you can sit, sit the wheels under them or sit the wheels on top of them and it'll sit right in place and you can't, can't knock the thing over. You can also steer it and everything with them sitting on these buckets. Pretty nice. Um, so what we're going to do, first thing is we need to measure to get our total length, or actually our length, from, from here to here and from here to here. Uh, it doesn't, you want to have your wheels straight. Uh, you want to have this straight up and down. It does not have to be perfect, but you want it pretty close. And it's pretty close right now. So let's take our measuring stick. And what I like to do <clears throat> is measure, especially when I'm trying to find the center of a hole, I prefer to measure from like one this end of the hole to this end of the next hole, rather than trying to measure center to center. Because if you're measuring from this outside edge to this outside edge uh, of the hole, not of the of the bracket, you're going to get the same measurement as trying to measure center to center. So we're going to take our Jim Dandy measuring stick here and bring it over to the hole. And it looks like we're getting about uh, my terrible eyesight, about 27.6. 27.6. Turn it around. Do the same thing on this side. We're going to put it on the edge of that hole and bring it right over here. And we're getting, make sure it's still in position, and we're getting about, what are we getting there? About 27.7, 7, 27, 7, 27, 8. So we'll say 27.6, 27, 8. So we'll come right over here. And we write it down, 27, 7, 27, 6, was it 6? It's close enough. So uh, we'll just split it. We'll just say um, 27, I'm just going to make my life easy. I'm going to say 27, 5. 27 centimeters, 5 millimeters. That just makes it easier. Uh, and we're going to cut both of them to the same length. All right, we've got our sideways numbers here. My measurement's 27.6, 27.7. I decided to go with 27.5. Uh, here's a uh, detailed technical drawing of the tie rod uh, with the uh, heim joint ball ends and the aluminum rod and the nuts. I, this is one of the tie rod ends. I got these in sets. This is a right hand one. This is a left hand one. I'll add a link to show where uh, I got I got these off Amazon. I'll put a link on uh, there for Amazon if you want to get these yourself. You can do right hand on both sides, but if you do right hand on both sides, you will have to unbolt one end in order to make an adjustment. With these, all you have to do is loosen the nuts up and turn the rod in the center, and you can adjust it in or out. So the first thing we got to do is we're going to measure from the uh, center of this hole to the end of this real quick. <clears throat> Let's see what we get here. And there's so much junk on my table, I barely got room to do this. Okay, so we're going to get, uh, actually, yeah, I got about 50 total millimeters there. Right at it. Let's call it right at 50. Let's see, in case I need to use that number in a minute. And then I've got, for the threaded area, I have right at 30, just a little more than 30 millimeters. And I'm just going to go with 30 because that's a, easier to work with than 31.9. And the thing about this is, because they are adjustable, you have a little bit of slop in there you can work with. So we want to have plenty of thread engagement in the rod when we thread the rod you don't want to have it this much engagement you want to have plenty of engagement so they're stronger so I, I want about let's see here that was 30 so I want about probably 15 millimeters of engagement and that will give me about uh, minus this uh, which is probably about was this five millimeters right in there yeah right about five millimeters for the nut that'll give me 10 millimeters of adjustment for the whole thing so 
30 millimeters for the whole thing. Uh, we're going to figure 15 millimeters of thread engagement, and that means that we've got to subtract uh, 15 from 50, so that gives us 35. So the total length was 27. 0.5 centimeters and we've got 35 or 3 centimeters 5 millimeters or 3.5 centimeters uh, extra on the, from the length here so we can subtract 35 twice or 3.5 twice from 27.5 so that's actually 7 centimeters that gives us 20 0.5 centimeters, 20.5 centimeters for the full length of our rod. So that should be correct. My math might be terrible. My math is terrible, so I could be wrong. So double check me on that. So that should give us our full thing. So like if we had, so that would say 20 centimeters, which is, this thing's not going to be long enough. Is Oh, it's not long enough. That's fine. Oh, you know what? My glue gun is on, too. Let's turn that off before I set something on fire. Okay. So just for grins here, I'm going to say... i going to run out of room here. Say 20 centimeters. So that's a zero point right there. And was it 20.5? That right there. And then <clears throat> we're going to need to add... We're going to add these right on to either end at 15... We need. We still need to calculate because our overall length from you know, I'm flipping everybody off. The overall length from ball joint to ball joint is 27.5, but we need to subtract uh, the distance from uh, the the nut from here to the center of the ball end. And so we'll just take a quick where are we at. Get a little measuring deal right here. We're going to put it at about 15 millimeters. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to put it at 20 millimeters because that's right in the center. 20 millimeters. And that's going to give us pretty close right there. Okay, so at 20 millimeters, it gives me 5 millimeters of adjustment here, 5 millimeters of adjustment here, and 15 millimeters of engagement down here. And that, measuring from this side of the nut to the center of the hole, is going to be... Where are we at? About, I'm getting, what am I getting there? 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters. Okay, so that's 30 millimeters. Am I including the nut in that? Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's about 30 millimeters. Where's my pencil? So we'll say 30 millimeters, and then times two, so 60 millimeters. And then we're going to subtract uh, 60 millimeters from... 275 millimeters, 27.5, or 27 centimeters, 5 millimeters. So we'll say 275 millimeters because that's what it is. So that gives us 21.5 centimeters. And that should be our length from the nut to the nut for this tube. So let's check that real quick. Let's see here. Just for grins, so we're going to put a, make sure we can see what's going on here. I have our zero point right there. We're going to have 21.5 right here. We're going to make sure both of our nuts are set at about 20 millimeters, give or take. Close enough. Put one right there. And we'll set the left hand side. And a tip, if you ever uh, get these, the gold nut is the left-hand one. And just make sure, we're just going to get it kind of close, it doesn't have to be perfect. Put that right there. Alright, now we'll just measure from the center of one joint to the center of the other one. And hopefully it'll be about 27.5. And... Where's that? There, center... 
to center. It's a little shy. We're looking at about um, 27.3. I'm telling you, it's close enough for government work. This, this will work. So we know now 21.5. Uh, which is this number in the middle, all these other numbers, 21.5 is the number this rod needs to be. Now, I'll tell you a secret, full disclosure, I know this will work because I already made these and uh, threaded them and everything and forgot to film it. So I'm doing it again. I do not have enough extra material to make another rod, but I do have uh, a piece. So I'm going to go through uh, threading it and making sure the end's flat, a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, these rods, which is this one reason why I haven't really talked about the materials too much yet, is you can get these in 300 millimeter lengths off of Amazon. If you need a longer length than that, you probably should go to a metal supplier. You get it way cheaper. Uh, Amazon sells these a pair of them, 300 millimeters, uh, for about 10 bucks. This is a 27.2 OD tube with an 8.8 .8 millimeter ID which is just about perfect for the tap correct tap size because we're gonna use these joints. Got these off of Amazon too. They come in sets. I think, I can't remember, I think they come in sets of four. They might come in sets of eight, but I got these, I'll put links uh, in, my, in the notes on the, on the page. Uh, these are, they're called 3 8 by 3 8 by 24 because the hole is 3 8 the threading, the width of this, uh, threaded area is 3 8 and this is 24 threads per inch so uh, these are a good deal these are economy ones you can get fancier ones but these work fine they don't have any slop in them and they're cheap and easy to get uh, i'm big on buying stuff local but at the same time this is like a super easy way to go because you're not going to go into lowe's and find these and you're not going to go into lowe's and find this tubing either uh, some place like a metal supermarket would have this and you could pro you probably could find some in their cutoff section pretty cheap which is if you're building carts or cars or anything uh, in your shop your home shop when you go to a metal shop go back to the cutoff section ask them where it is because they sell that stuff by the pound and this stuff by the pound would cost nothing because this is like an ounce and a half uh, if you buy it uh, cut to length it will be way more i think i know one of my videos i sh i showed you a sheet of three by four uh what was that uh, like 18 gauge or uh, no 065 aluminum that was a hundred bucks if i had bought that if it had been a cutoff it weighs about four pounds i probably would have paid yeah, like five dollars for it all right so the next step is you've got to cut this and i'll show you how i did it and uh, then I'll show you a way that you can do it that might be a little easier. All right, here's what I did. I used a lathe. That allowed me to cut it very, very straight. And I just used a uh, cutoff tool uh, to, that you use for a parting tool that you use for cutting off like your waist piece or whatever, or a finished piece. And basically, I just fired that rascal up. I had my line marked on there. And I just got it where I wanted it and then just fed in and cut right in there until I trimmed it off just to the length I wanted it. And then I backed my tool out of the way, back this thing up a little bit right here, and I had my tap, and I slid my tap right into the tool like this, didn't focus. And then all I did was just start running the, by hand, and I'm turning the wrong way because this is a left hand tap. And I just started running the tap into the, get it on there, and ran it in that way. That way I made sure that the threads were square to my workpiece. Uh, that was a great way to do it. So everybody should run out and spend 1500 bucks on a uh, lathe, which this is a Shop Fox M1049. It's a pretty decent lathe. It is having some little paint issues right there, but it works pretty good. You can also get those little uh, mini lathes for like three or 400 bucks, and you can do a surprising amount of stuff with one of those. They're quite handy. But now I'm gonna do the way I would cut it if I did not have this, 
which until about two years ago, I didn't have one of these. When I don't have a lathe to do this kind of work, what I do is use a piece of tape and just wrap it around the piece. And that gives me, you can see it, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of nib that's off just a tiny little bit right there. But it's pretty straight, and if I cut to this tape line, I will end up with a pretty straight cut. So I'm going to clamp this in the vise and cut this with a hacksaw. You can see it's in the vise. You just want to get lined up, make sure your saw is, you know, straight. And then just let the saw cut through the part. Don't worry about, you know, trying to make a lot of progress with each cut. Just let the thing cut through. If you really lean on it, that's how you get crooked. And uh, I'm no Alan Millard. I mean, that guy can cut a crankcase in half with a hacksaw. But if I follow this tape, I should end up with a pretty straight cut. And then we'll dress it and get it even straighter when we get finished cutting through here. Now we've got our cut piece. It's actually cut pretty flat. We could probably go with it just like this. But we'll take a file. And with a file, we're going to... Make sure that the file is flat to the piece and that it is, we're going to get a straight cut and we're just going to dress the part. So all you're going to do, that's all you got to do is just make sure you're taking off any little extra pieces and you're going to get, and then that should give you a nice flat area for the nut from the ball end to tighten to. And then we'll also, you're going to want to take that file and this piece out of here one-handed. See how skilled I am. There we go. So you've got some, uh, let me get it in focus here. You can see you've got a little bit of uh, debris on there, some little edges and stuff like that that you want to get, there we go, that you want to get that stuff off too. And same thing, just take the file and take that off as well. Last thing we've got to do is put some threads in this. So we're going to put it back in our vise here. And you can use any, this vise has a little cutout in it for round pieces, which is, works moderately well and the best thing in the world. You need your tap. This is the left hand. You have to, if you look close on your taps, it'll, it'll have the uh, sizes marked on there like that. And this one too. This is a different model tap, different brand tap. And it will focus eventually. There you go. Like that. So we've got both of our taps there. We've got, you have two kinds of tap handles. You have these, which I must have 10 of these things. They are, they never fit. They're, they're, it's rare that you get one that is like, <laughs> that fits the tap that you have. Because it's got to fit onto this, um, this little square part right here. So it's got to fit that. It is rare that it does. It's like neat. As a matter of fact, this one does not fit either one of these tabs. So <clears throat> we're going to use the other kind of tab handle, which is this style, which is the style I, <clears throat> I prefer. We're going to use that, and we're going to tap this bad boy right here, which will come back and focus in a second, maybe. 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 Come on, focus for me. There we go. Okay, so we need to put our tap on there, and these taps just fit in. The thing is, you can see it's got a square cut out in it. Come on. It's got a square cut out in it. This piece just fits right in there. That just tighten it right up. And with this in a vise, you want to make sure that your tap is square. Don't get it at an angle or anything like that. And you, if you're careful, you should be able to tap. This already, it's a pre-existing hole. You should be able to tap right in there. And you're just going to keep it straight, turn it, go back just a little bit, because you're you're creating a well scarf or whatever you want to call it. You're creating a little curl of metal on the back side of this cutting edge. And this thing is out of focus again. Let's get back in there. We've been look like we've been drinking. And you're gonna create a little curl of metal on these edge of these cutters. And if you keep turning it and turning it and turning it you'll screw up the threads that you're putting in here because those curls are going to wind up and feed back into the, the threads that you're trying to cut and it'll jam up. So you want to, you'll turn in and then turn back and break that, break that little 
uh, curl off and turn in and back turn in and back and you just want to keep doing that until you've cut as deep as you need to cut and so I usually go about a turn and then a half a turn back and this doesn't take long the big thing is just you know take your time make sure you start that tap straight once you start the tap straight you should be good to go all right and then so we're good to go if you want you can I usually do this dry yes if you're cutting steel especially um, you might want to lubricate the taps uh, they do last longer if you lubricate them and so got our little that done that was a right hand thread here's our in our ball in and it threads right in there it's like that it's like they're super easy to make it's like it's like that's all you got to do to make one just like this and then we'll go ahead and put them back on the cart real quick and take a look at them the finished job start out with my cool speedway wheel these are great go-kart wheels they're good price 50 60 bucks you can get one of them it's a great wheel but let's go on down here to the tie rods and there they are all installed I've got uh, both of them you might be tempted when you put them on to put uh, left hand out or right hand out you know uh, so they're opposite so like on the case of this one this is the left hand threaded side is right here and then you might want to put the other left hand threaded side right there what I recommend doing is keeping them oriented the same way so I've got the left hand and go around on the other side of this okay from this perspective the left hand threaded side is on the left hand side facing the cart and it doesn't matter either way right but the trick uh, the trick is to have both rods oriented the same direction that way you know when you turn this rod back it's going to widen you can see it moving that wheel and moving quite a bit you know when you turn the rod one direction it's gonna make the wheel go out and then when you turn same in this case you're rotating them backwards it makes the wheels go out and when you roll it turn it forward it brings the wheel back in so that way you're not thinking okay which way does it go you know you you're both of them work the same direction and so this is pretty much it you can this uh, aluminum this is uh, 60 63 aluminum you can polish it uh, if you uh, got more money than I do you can buy 6061 aluminum which is a uh, a little more resistant to corrosion and stuff but this stuff does work fine like I said I'll put the notes for where I got uh, notes for where I got this tubing off of Amazon and where I got these ball ends off of Amazon I did you can, this bolt is way too long we'll trim that down and then the only other issue we got is <clears throat> this I got uh, this piece uh, this little weld piece uh, pre-made it is too short uh, I'm going to have to cut this off and make a longer one, which will, I may video that because it's only going to be like, uh, well, it'll, be a, it'll probably be an hour's worth of work, but it's only going to be like 10 minutes worth of video, so I don't know if I'm going to bother doing that. But I may show how my process for making little fittings like this. Anyway, uh, that is making tie rods for your go-kart. Y'all, you know, the usual algorithm stuff they give tell you to do is like, subscribe, comment. Please comment. I do like comments. And uh, tell all your friends, tell your enemies, uh, dislike if you want to dislike, that's fine too. Uh, Y'all have a great night.